We're gonna hem a natural silk four ply crepe. What makes it a crepe is that you can see the fibers are kind of wiggly. So you can assume that they're crimped or they're creped. Crimped, think like how girls did their hair in like the 80s, 90s, whatever. Um, all right, so for this hem, I'm gonna do something a little that's a little extra special because I think that I would use this fabric for like a tailored pant or jacket and I wouldn't necessarily line it just because it has such a beautiful weight. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a strip that is the same width as this bottom edge here, about five or six inches, but it's two inches wide. So I'm just giving it a little bit extra because we can assume that this is gonna be like the hem of a skirt or a pant. And what I'm gonna do is put right sides facing. So it's almost like you're making um, like an extra, I wouldn't say like bias, but you're just cutting a strip of the same fabric so you can have something a little extra special along the bottom. But before we turn this under, we're gonna use another style of that double folded bias tape. This is, um, let's see, yeah, it's about a quarter of an inch. So again, this is double fold bias tape that means that it's folded, you consider like the center, like your mirror line, so that would be one fold and two folds. So double folded bias tape at one quarter of an inch. So when you're buying it, the width is a quarter because that's the finished width of the bias tape. So I'm gonna put the bias tape along this little additional piece. And I'm gonna use my wonder clips again, just because it's going to keep it secured. And then I'm going to sew that an eighth of an inch closest to the edge that's on the inside of the fabric, not the hem side, the inside. So I'm just using a straight stitch again. You can use pins if you don't have the wonder clips. You're just going to want to make sure that the bias tape is um, has this fabric sandwiched as well as possible inside of it. So this is the wrong side, this is the right side of the fabric. We're gonna take our fabric again, and I'm gonna put right sides facing. So this is like adding extra stability to your hem. We're gonna assume that the hem of our main portion of fabric is gonna be like half an inch. So what I'm gonna do is, now I'm gonna join these two pieces right sides facing, so right side of the fabric to right side of the fabric at half an inch. Now I have my extension here with the bias tape folded to my self fabric. So now I'm gonna open them up and fold this back to the right side. So this is now my, my outside of the self fabric, and this is my self of that little extension. So we're gonna do something that's called stitching in the ditch, and unless you're familiar with this, you should become uh, accustomed to doing this whenever you have like a lining or um, a facing. So step one was we added the bias tape. Step two, we put our little, um, strip here facing the right side of the fabric. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna open this up and we're gonna push all the seam allowance toward our extension. So in most cases you would press that, but I'm just gonna pin it for right now so I don't have to run back and forth to the machine. So I have all of my seam allowance pushed toward that extension piece and I'm gonna stitch in the ditch. So I'm gonna stitch as close as possible to our original seam on top of the seam allowance. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna create, it's gonna like make the fabric naturally roll toward the back. 
And granted, you can see my stitches, but you would use the same color thread as the fabric. Now you just have this really gorgeous, super clean edge along the bottom. And if you turn it to the wrong side, you see how it's kind of like curling toward the back? That's what the stitch in the ditch does. So you could either do a blind hem by hand to secure these two pieces, or you could do it by machine. I'm going to do it by hand just because I think it would look nicer. So I'm going to put a few more pins in here. Got my needle threaded. I just had it in the machine just to hold on to. Alright, so what you're going to do is I'm going to push all these pins down a bit. Um, if you, Depending on what fabric you're using to do your blind hem, you could pin running parallel to this bias tape. But what we're going to do in this case is I'm just going to like let this roll over a little bit. And this is where it gets tricky. So I'm going to pick up just a hair of the fabric underneath my bias tape. And then I'm going to pull this through. You don't want to pick up too much because you don't want it to show on the right side of the fabric so that it can be like a true blind hem. So I'm just going to pick up like one teeny little thread and then I'm going to pick up a fiber from the bias tape and I'm going to pull that but not too snug. We're going to flip this down and then you would just tie a knot in there make sure it's hidden. So notice how you can't see my blind hem but if I take these pins out this lip is not going to fall. Obviously we would press this first but that's your blind hem. You can't see it from the inside and you can't see it from the outside. Next we're going to do the hem on this Metallic Mint Liquid Sheen Polyester Chiffon. This is item number 326659. And we're going to do a baby rolled hem on this one as well. It's the most, it's probably one of the most lightweight fabrics. I don't think it necessarily has as much body as the organza. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the baby roll hem again. So because this fabric is so slippery um, and so lightweight, when you roll with your fingers, the fabric usually conforms to whatever you're doing to it. Otherwise, you can go and you can press it. There are a few different ways to do a baby hem, but I prefer just doing it by, by your hands. You can obviously measure this out and then pin on, on a diagonal. And that's just step one. This is just to get the first roll of the baby hem because what you want to do is you want to hide this raw edge inside of that hem. So now that we've rolled our quarter inch there, I'm going to do the second roll. And we have to be sure that this rolls perfectly so that it hides the raw edge of the chiffon. So I definitely highly recommend pressing first, pressing your first fold first, and then rolling your second. Use a presser cloth too. There's also um, a foot that does the baby roll hem. And you have to do a little practice with that before you preach, that's for sure. Um, you can buy those attachments at different increments depending on the size of the baby roll hem that you would like to achieve. So now that I've pinned that over, I'm going to do the 1 8 of an inch stitch closest to the inside of my fabric. And obviously you would use thread to match, but I'm using contrast so I can show you once this is sewn. 
Don't forget you have to use a thinner needle with lighter weight fabrics because they have a mind of their own and chances are your machine will eat them up if your tension is too high, if your needle is too thick, if you're using the wrong um, stitch length. So I've got mine on a three right now. Take your time. You can leave your pins in if you like. And that is a baby rolled hem. And it's nice and clean on either side. And then once you press it, you'll get like a lot more of that flow back too. Now we're gonna do a hem on this Italian Pompeian red creped wool double cloth. This is item number FW11654. This is my favorite fabric to work with ever for making evening gowns. It is just enough stretch along the weft of the fabric. So this one's a little different. So when, when you have double faced fabrics, you can pull them apart and you see these little fibers inside. That's basically what's weaving both sides of the double faced fabric together. So you can just open that and trim those and then it releases the fabric from being stuck to either side. So what I like to do is, I'm gonna do a baste stitch first so that when I'm unraveling, I don't unravel too far. So I'm gonna change my stitch length to a little bit higher. And I'm gonna do that at one inch. So a baste stitch is like a temporary stitch that you can pull out later. Now that we have our basting, I'm going to separate this fabric up to that mark. So now that we have both sides separated, but we have our basting so that we don't go past that, um, that line there, what we're going to do is you're going to fold this down. I'm going to fold it down like three eighths of an inch. On either side. And I'm just eyeballing this because like I'm so familiar with the measurements that it's like sickening, but. <laughs> Be sure it'll use your ruler. And because this is wool, it presses really nicely, but it's still not like super duper heavyweight when you think of wool fabric like a tweed or a boucle. All right, so that's one side. Now we have to fold in the other side at the same height. So instead of putting in a second set of pins, I'm gonna use the same and just pinch these two between my fingers. So if you use the ruler, you should have like a really perfect measurement on one side from your fold. And then you're gonna do the same with this outer edge. So now I have both sides pinned together and I'm gonna run to the iron and I'm gonna press it quick. Do not press on top of your pins ever, ever, because they're gonna make indentations on your fabric. So now that I'm back from the iron, I just pressed this so it's like a nice little like wool crepe sandwich. So I'm gonna take needle and thread now. And I'm gonna do the same idea as a blind hem. I'm just gonna catch either side of the wall. I'm gonna put a pin just there. Because, just because. <laughs>
this is to assume you wouldn't be putting a lining into this garment. So the next thing you would do is you would take out your basting. I'm afraid of seam rippers, so I'd rather use my little nippers. And you can always do your basting by hand as long as it's like not too far apart because you don't want the fabric to continue spreading as you're pulling those fibers out from in between. But if your basting was big enough, you could probably pull it out. Voila, and that is it. Basting out, and then now that that's sewn together, you could always do like a top stitch really, really close to the edge, but I think that would make it look cheap. So definitely stick to like the hand whipping in there. That is the hem for double-faced wool crepe. So now we're gonna hem velvet. And this is item number 312813. It is Scarlet Red 100% Micro Polyester Velvet. So first, I've already pressed it up one inch. And when you're pressing velvet, you want to keep like a towel underneath so that the nap, which is this pile, doesn't get squished. Because once it gets, gets like flattened from the heat especially, it's gonna be um, indented and you can't get those out. You'll have to recut the whole panel from the of the garment. So I'm gonna do a zigzag to catch the very edge of this raw hem first. If you have a serger, you can do that. But I do not have a serger in the room I am working right now. So I'm just gonna catch along the edge. So now that that's finished, I'm gonna do a top stitch right at that edge. Again, only use silk pins in special occasion fabrics. Do not press on top of your pins either, especially with velvet, well, in any case, but be sure to change your machine back to a straight stitch. And I need to adjust my length. And use two hands while sewing. And obviously the same color thread as the fabric that you're working with. That's the right side of the fabric. And this is the back side. Again, you would probably most likely put a lining in with velvet fabric. But in this case, if you're just turning it up and want to clean finish the edge, you can just do the zigzag or the serge first and then turn it up and do your stitching right over top. Just be sure your stitches are you know, between like a three and a four length on your machine. All right, so now we're gonna try out this baby roller hem foot. You can get this on moodfabrics.com as well, which is awesome because it's actually a very special foot. It's, um, it has like this coil and bar. If you can see it's kind of like twisting in there. So what it does is it's gonna roll the fabric as you're sewing it. So if you don't wanna do the more complex version of a baby hem, where you have to run to the iron and press that hem up and then press it over again and do all the pinning and stuff, you can use this foot. It is definitely not the easiest to use. Um, I may have some issues trying myself. I've used it before, but it takes a little getting used to when you haven't worked with it in quite a while. Typically um, on a pleated fabric, such as this accordion pleated, Chiffon, this is item number 314078. And I love the color because it's kind of like this rosy pink and the pleats are so, they're so consistent, which is really special. It's nice to use fabrics that have had some texture or effect given to them. So what we're gonna do is we're not gonna have the right side facing up we're gonna have the wrong side facing up. And to start using this foot, you're gonna to have to do at least an inch worth of stitching so that we can hold on to the tail end when we thread it through that, that um, fold over bit inside the foot. So I'm gonna do, I don't want it to roll just yet. Okay, so now we have this temporary stitch in here. Again, if you were doing this 
for for real you would use the same color thread as the fabric but I'm just using the black so I can show you how to, how to use it yourself. So you're going to hold on to the tail ends and you're going to pull those through this, this wounded part of the foot. You have to maintain the rest of the fabric laying flat, of course. So you're going to pull that through and then you're going to notice that your fabric is going to start like, like turning over like a wave, kind of like, I think like a wave at the beach. So the really important thing to do is know that like from the back end of the machine, you're gonna have to pull the fabric through a little bit just so that it does consistent stitching on your actual hem. The other thing to keep in mind is that when you are hemming this, you wanna be sure that the, the raw end of the fabric is perfectly curling underneath that coil bit inside of the foot because if this doesn't roll under, then the foot isn't gonna catch all of the fabric and do the hem the right way. So this is about like mm, between an eighth and a quarter when it's finished. So we wanna be sure that when we're rolling this raw edge under, it's actually turning completely inside of that. So you can do it ahead of time and kind of like guide it in but it's naturally going to roll as you start using the foot. So I'm gonna pull the back end through a little. You're gonna to wanna to go a little bit slower. If you can change the speed of your dog feet, definitely do that. But notice how I'm not pushing, cause I don't wanna get two folds under here. I just wanna get that one, my raw edge to, to touch where the full width of my baby hem is gonna be. So take your time with this. It does take practice. Even after years of hemming special occasion fabrics, I still have issues with this foot attachment. But just take your time, it really is about patience. And then when you get to the very end, it's hard to do a back tack with this foot because you don't want the, the machine to like eat the fabric. And that is your baby rolled hem. So notice you kind of lost a little bit of the pleats. That's the right side, the outside. And this is the wrong side or the back of the fabric. So I was able to catch everything in there, see that the stitch is actually closer to the actual hem edge. So be sure when you're rolling it, you're getting everything in there nice and perfect. So it's being caught by those stitches. And to get those pleats back in your fabric, you can run over to the iron and you can pleat them back by hand. And then you can just give a little bit of steam. Be sure you put your pressing cloth over top because you don't want to end up adding more pleats because the fabric's already naturally pleating. You could always just steam the hem. I think I, I really love it, like how much fluidity it has, kind of like water at the bottom. But as you add steam, it should bring back those pleats. Just be very, very patient when you end up pressing them out. And that is how you do a baby roller hem on pleated chiffon. I hope this tutorial gave you guys a lot of good tips and tricks to use on your special occasion fabrics. Don't forget all the necessary tools, changing your stitch settings, changing your foot, and using the right scissors, seam rippers, and sewing needles. Be sure you use a narrow needle on your machine with special occasion fabrics because they're more delicate. And the rest is history.